Time for another Acoustic Alternatives. I'm John Bomarito. Big thanks again, as usual, every week to Grove Studios for allowing me to have a home to do this thing I love to do, which is promote music I believe in, music I want you to know about. Grove Studios, for those of you who live in the Ann Arbor, Ipsy, Detroit area, is a place that you could rent if you are looking for a place to practice your band. There's a couple of different sizes of rooms here. If you're a DJ, you want to do some practicing and not disturb the neighbors, there's a place for that. You want to do a podcast, I'm in the podcast room, all available to, to view. Just look Grove Studios up and you'll be able to figure out how it all works. And uh, I'm happy to welcome another one of the musicians from the local area that I believe in. Sid Burnham is here. Hello, Sid. What's up, everybody? Thanks for having me, John. It's good to see you again after a long absence. Yeah, for real. Thank you so much. My pleasure. I know that you've been releasing a, a song or two or three over the last year or so. We'll, we'll get into that. But uh, I don't know what you want to start with singing-wise. Maybe it's one of those newer ones. What would you like to do? Yeah, we want to start off with just writing with music. Okay. Well, let's do a song that I have released already. Um, I released this one in January. Yeah, this was the first one that I released this year. I had high hopes of, like, releasing a bunch of songs this year, like maybe one per month, but I wasn't very well prepared because... Record, like recording equipment keeps breaking and all that kind of stuff so hopefully new music comes this song is called For a Girl All of my lights are flashing When did you stop caring To have something good last Oh, I'll try to find a way Inside of your mind Maybe you're the reason I can't seem to find mine I won't stop this train Car is on the tracks. Oh, if I live today, oh, I'll probably come right back. Oh, I heard our song the other day in my car. It reminded me that summer's not. Music from Sid Burnham on Acoustic Alternatives. Four Girls, the song, right? Yeah, that's right. There you go. It's one of your newer ones. And I got to say, compared to the previous material you've released, this is a little bit more soulful for you. Yeah, it's a little different. I've definitely taken the reins on like recording recently. Mm -hmm. um, and so as I've written songs, I've been able to record them faster. Mm -hmm. So um, that one was kind of, I mean, I guess I did write that a year out, but uh, compared to past times when I've recorded, it's been like two to three years once I've gotten the songs actually recorded. So, you know, that was a newer one that I had written like recently and it was about something I've been going through more recently. So yeah, I felt a little bit more passionate um, recording it. 
just had more of like a neo soul feel that than your like yeah your yeah. more rock oriented stuff that you've written in the past. That's what I was. Yeah, about. I'm definitely been much more influenced by that as well recently. So well, sounds cool. I'm, I'm excited you. to hear what else you have to to, to play and sing for me. Thank so you. the Zid has recently relocated to Detroit. Brighton was your home before that. Is that correct? Yeah, I moved from Brighton to Detroit. What was it? It was January 2020 that hmm. I moved there. Yeah, Before the world turned upside down. Right. I moved there for school, and I moved there in the winter semester. And if you're a college student, you know that spring break came around that year, and we were out of school. So I got the college experience for two months tops. Ooh. Right. I was in the dorms, and it was amazing. I had really one of the best times of my life um, those two months, but... I was kicked out and I had to move back to the basement. <laughs> so that's where I was for all of quarantine. But you were still in school. I was in school, but it was online. So was I really in school? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Not really. Yeah. I had fun with like my art classes. It did give me something to do. Like I was making weird sculptures just out of materials I had at home. So <laughs> that occupied my time. But other than that, I don't know. I can't imagine having to go through that this time as a student. I mean, even whether it be elementary or college, it doesn't really matter. Right. I think along the way, you lose something not being in a classroom and not really experiencing it face to face. Yeah, for sure. And all throughout high school, well, at least my last two years of high school, I was really online for a lot of it. Mm -hmm. And so when I went to college, I knew that I needed to be in person because that's how I thrived learning, really having that just the environment, you know, get being able to focus in like the one room where everybody's focusing on the same thing. That really helps me. And when it's online, it feels very chaotic to me. So yeah, online school is very difficult. I could not imagine doing this as a young kid and not being able to be around like my friends in the no. classroom and stuff. You're going to continue your studies though, either way, right? Yeah, I'm going to try to. Um, Hopefully this new bartending job works out for me and I can take, like do that at night and take classes during the day next fall. Well, the music thing's got a, a pretty good chance of working out for you too. You, right. You like. I, of that's, course, that's another thing I got to work on in the monks of all of that. Yeah, <laughs> that's why you're here is the music thing. So right. I, sometimes I discover music because people will have sent me a CD. Sometimes it's that I was somewhere and the performer was singing. And that was the case with you. You were such a presence on the stage and you, you commanded my attention and those around me. And then I saw you again, like a week later, or it was a really short time period. Like, Holy moly. <laughs> like, who are you? And why, why have I not been familiar with you already? So I, I know that you can command a stage with professionalism with a band behind you. Yeah. And I'm sure a little harder to do these Thank days. You. There's not a lot of band performing going on right now. Right. And that's such a compliment. Thank you so much. I've well, performing on stage, the audience is really a gift, like being able to be on stage and like share what I've written and just to be in front of people and be able to get their attention for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like that's really just, I take that as such a privilege. You know, I love to be able to do that. And, um, I was able to like grow up doing that. You met when you, me when I was younger, I was probably like, like 16 doing that. Yeah, like yeah. Two or three years ago, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I've been doing this for a while. It's like my favorite thing ever. And gigs are starting to come back up. The other day I was like, just real, I was scrolling on Facebook. I never go on Facebook. I was telling you that the other day and I was scrolling through Facebook. I saw all my musician friends are like, Oh, I have a gig here and here. And I'm like, Oh Finally. shoot. I forgot about that. Like I should <laughs> probably try and do some in advance, yeah. you know, like, yeah stuff's open you forget that you can actually plan for the future now mm -hmm. so the other day i was just emailing like a mad woman like asking all my musician friends like hey do you have any contacts like <laughs> let me just play anywhere at this point you know I'll open for you i'll open for you right for uh, real i'll take anything but <laughs> yeah i'm excited to play again when did the bug bite you to be a musician Oh, well, you can if you really want to see old school sit if you look up sydney bonita <laughs> 2006. Um, <laughs> you can see me when I was six years old playing with my dad's whole stage oh. or band on like this big stage that his lead singer, he would put on like a festival every year that they would play at. And so I'm on stage singing like, um, I want you to want me. Nice. And my, my voice sounds like a little chickmunk because I'm so young, you know. But it's always been there. I used to be, I, my Nana has videos of me singing with her cane on the fireplace when I was like four years old. Hmm. That was my microphone. It's, it's always been in me, I guess. Well, I know Dad was a huge part of it because of his band. Of course, right. Being surrounded yeah. by music at home. And, and right. that's hard not to be... Well, I mean, if it's always around you, it's hard not to let it get in you, right? Right. I'm super, super lucky that, like, I grew up with my dad. And, you know, even my mom, too. She, my dad, of course, he knew how to play. But my mom had, she listened to great music. And, you know, that's even more important than playing to me because I'm influenced 
you know, when your dad plays music, it's like, oh yeah, my dad plays guitar. Like, you know, he's cool. But being able to listen to greats and stuff and having my mom introduce me to Stevie Nicks and all of that, that's what's really like took me ahead. And of course, my dad teaching me and playing with me, like, of course, I learned a lot of on YouTube guitar mm -hmm. wise, but if I really needed something, I had a guitar teacher in the basement. All I had to do was walk down the stairs. Yeah. So that was perfect. <laughs> Can you show me. me to do this? Dad? Right, right, exactly. Well, I met both your parents. They're both excellent people, and they, they raised are. a really cool daughter. So For thanks, sure. mom and dad. They'll love to hear that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's go to a scenario that you're. I don't know. You're in a hotel. The elevator speech is what people call it. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're, you're walking. To the, you, you're a friendly person. I've, and I've interacted with you before. You walk into the elevator and someone says, hey, what do you do? Because you know, you're, you're bored to talk. What's your elevator speech? What, what do you say to people about your music? Oh, well, if it's somebody coming up to me and say, hey, what do you do? What a vague question. You know, where do I even begin? Like, what do I do for work? What do I do for my hobbies? Like, do I want to consider music my job? You know, so. Do you? I don't know. I mean, I do, but like, I want it to be, of course, more because of my love for it. And I've found that when, especially when I was younger, I would play a lot of gigs for the money, you know, because that was a way to get money. And I kind of um, lost the art in the middle of it, if that makes sense. So where was I going with this? I forgot. I'm trying to decide what you would say about, oh, your, really right. more about your music, but you can say right. to me about what, what it would be about you. If I, if I met you for the first time in a hallway and I said, Hey, how are you? And we're just kind of waiting for something. We're waiting in line. We're bored. We're talking to each right. other. What do you do? Well, I'd probably say like, yeah, I play, I play music. Um, oh. but most likely I would end up just telling them about what generally happened that day. And <laughs> some of the times that we'll be playing music and some of the times that's, oh, well, I just made this shirt today. Today I was sewing and some oh. days I'm painting. I don't know. I feel like I identify with a lot of different things that I do. What if you had to describe your music to somebody? What would if that I had to describe my music? Well, that's another thing. My mom used to try and describe it as like funky, folky rock. And I was like, I don't even know what that means, I guess. Um, and I feel like uh, genre bending is a really common thing. Like, it's hard to even say what pop music and what rock music is, I guess. But sure. I guess I'm very heavily influenced by rock music. Um, I have that neo soul influence. Um, but you also find a lot of folk songwriting. I'm really more than anything love the songwriting in my songs. Like, that's what... I do it for it's my release type of thing so that's what I'm most proud of and I'd probably say oh I'm a songwriter if somebody asked me about my music so the most impactful songwriters I knew in your period of listening to music have been most impactful songwriters like I was saying Stevie Nicks of course yeah. but that's just like the classic I really love Stevie Wonder um, I, that's another classic that I'm always talking about but um, even just as simple as listening to Isn't She Lovely, like that's about his daughter. It's yeah. the most, when I listen to it, I really pay attention to it. Like it just makes me cry. I really love it. Um, who else do I love? Um, I love Albert King and my other Stevie, Stevie, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Um, try and think of the records that I always put on. I've been listening to a lot of Temptations really, or recently and a lot of Aretha Franklin um, You're in Detroit. That's right, okay. I'm in Detroit. <laughs> of course, that's surrounded by me. But I guess more recently, like if we want to get really into it, like I'm in love with SZA. Of course, most girls will know who that is. Mm -hmm. But um, I love just songwriters that um, aren't afraid to talk about their feelings, you know, that will just put it all out there. Not really even caring about what the person that they're writing about will think, I guess. Yeah. When you're doing your shows, do you like to talk about what the song is about before you play it, or do you just kind of let people interpret it? Um, it depends on the crowd. If, if the people are listening to me, you know, and they want to know, like, I'll give them a story about my songs. You know, I love talking about, like, what I've written about. Like I'm saying, I'm a storyteller. But, um, you know, if I'm at a bar and it's 4 a.m. and everybody's drunk, no. I don't care to do that. Yeah, well, I much. care. Tell me a story about the song you're about to play. song I'm about to play. All right. Well, this is one that I just mm -hmm. recorded. Um, I'm working on finishing the vocals for it right now. But I wrote this at the beginning of the pandemic, and 
at the time writing it, you know, we didn't really know what a pandemic was necessarily, you know. One month, one year, we didn't know. Right. And like, you remember at the beginning, everybody's buying all the toilet paper and everything. We think it's going to like the world's going to end and all that. And so, um, like I was saying earlier, I was living in my parents' basement and um, I the only social interaction I had was my phone. So I was on Tinder. I was on Bumble. I found this guy and we started talking. And so the song is kind of about falling in love at the beginning of a pandemic. But <laughs> Me not really knowing. That's what I was writing about at the time. What's it called? This is called By Then. Um, a lot of people think I'm saying Biden in it. <laughs> but okay. I guess it's not terribly a bad thing. You make me feel happy inside. But I know I would be fine alone. Like I desire, or is it fantasy? It just boosts my pride. We go to sleep at the same time, and you ask me how I view my life, but I still. That would be weird if it was called Biden, actually. Right, <laughs> I would, know. It wouldn't fit in with the rest of the lyrics. <laughs> I know, it wouldn't. But every time I sing it, they're like, what are you saying? Because I've been able to actually play that one a few times. Yeah. I wrote that just before, like, couldn't actually go outside, you know? Yeah. And yeah, every time they're like, did you write that on purpose? And I'm like, no, no I didn't. It's no. actually kind of embarrassing. No, it's a good song. By then is new music from Sid Burnham and something that uh, I eventually think you'll release, won't you? <laughs> I will eventually. I'm hoping to do, like, maybe an EP. I can't figure it out. I'm going to figure out something eventually, you know. But I'm, my idea right now is just to compile some songs um, before I just release them, you know. So I just have some backup. Okay. Yeah. Good for you. Thanks. Well, a long list of gigs you've done dating back to 2015 appears on your website from private parties to the Michigan State Fair, Ann Arbor Summer Festival, Nor'easter Music Festival. You've been away from it for a long time now. Looking back, if it never happened again, what would your favorite experience have been from all of the gigs you've done? Oh, man. Well, you know, I love playing Beaver Island Music Festival. Okay. Um, so you have to take, like, a ferry out to the festival, you yeah. know? And 
you know, it was great. The whole festival was great. I got to headline and everything. They had the most amazing, like, green room behind the stage. You could hang out with all the, like, artists. But the funniest thing was they had, like, sets on the boat, and they expected you to play on these, like, ferry boats while the waves were just, like, crashing and going back and forth. So I have, like, my... It's just me because literally nobody else can play. And, yeah. and I'm supposed to stand in front of everybody sitting down. So I have my strap on. I can't have a mic up because it's going to fall. And I'm just, like, wailing <laughs> back and forth. Over. And I'm playing. But, yeah, that was... That it's was memorable, probably, I bet. Yeah, that was one time I won't forget for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure another unforgettable experience is something nobody actually got to see, but you did a stint on The Voice. So you spent, was it a month or so in L.A. or Philadelphia? Yeah, so I actually quarantined before any of you guys quarantined. <laughs> because when I got there, when I uh, made it to the blind audition rounds of The Voice, um, we were sequestered in a hotel for a month. What year so, was this? 2016? Well, this was my senior year of high school. I didn't miss it my first month of senior year. So I think this was 2018, 2018. 2018 or 2017. I don't remember. But yeah, it was crazy. I had to stay in a hotel room with my dad. I made amazing friends and it was a good experience. But at this point, it's just a blur. It's like, did that really happen? <laughs> it's a little something you, you can talk about that you right. were part of the, the, right. whole, the whole wheel. I guess it was a good experience, too, just for like um, being in Hollywood, yeah. as you want to say. I don't know. Well, yeah. I, I, I agree with your sentiment because I, I, I've heard you talk about it and you said music is not a competition, which is absolutely true. It's, yeah, it's just It's not. interpretive for one thing. People are either going to like it or not like it. Right, right. And I, I remember the night that, well, we did the blind audition and it's a weird thing because they like announce your name the night before you like go to the audition. So you don't know, you know, you're going to audition within the week, but you don't know which night. And so they luckily called me and my best friend that was like, that I met there for the month that I was hanging out with every day. They called us on the same day. And um, she's amazing too. She is like, she's getting so many amazing streams on like everything. She's doing great without, you know, all of that. Yeah. Um, but at the after I finish my audition, I go back to my hotel room. She finishes her audition. We find out where we're staying, because we get our phones back. They take your phones back too, and we're both and we find each other, and we're both like, "Did you make it?" And she's like, "Did you make it?" And we're both like, "No, we both didn't make it." And it's just like one of those things, you know. It was a good experience. I was able to see her again. I've hung out with her multiple times. We had like my other band, Red Herring, had a tour in New York. She lived there. I was able to hang out with her. So, cool. yeah, it was a good experience. Well, what are you studying in college? Is it music related? No, what? so much of me wants to do that, you know, but I feel like I focus on music so much more when I'm writing my songs, I'm spending time on that. And so I'm trying with school, I'm trying to figure out a job that I could do remotely and still gig or something, you there know, you so I'm going to school right now for graphic design. That way I can still be creative. I love yeah. drawing and painting and stuff. So that's just something I can take remotely. And maybe if I want to do a gig in California, I can take my laptop with me and do it over there too, you know? For sure. Yeah. And music is a business and you have to like, at this point, run your own exactly business. Exactly that too. And web design mm -hmm. is kind of related to graphic design. You're still doing, do you do web design for anybody besides yourself or do you still do it for yourself? No, I mean, I just use like Wix or whatever right okay. now for my website. I really do want to eventually design my own website or something like that, you know, but I'm brand new in school like i'm still a freshman so i haven't done too much into it yet okay when you were younger i remember uh, you traveled the country in a van <laughs> did that have any impact on songwriting for you like did you take any of the experiences that you saw when you were traveling the country and turn them into song ideas Wow. Well, yeah, you know, none of them made it to like... <laughs> you did, but none of them have been played. Yeah, I mean, I could look up, I if I typed in my phone right now, like old voice memos, like I wrote so many songs because when you're driving in a van and you're in the middle of Montana, like... Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, for real, like 150 miles away from the big, like any type of city, you yeah. know, um, and there's no service, you're like, I guess I'll write a song about... The dust that just went swiping across the street, you know, like, so yeah, I wrote a lot of songs. Um, I'm trying to even think if there's one of them that I still play from that time. Um, but a lot of my other travels have, um, you know, 
songs have come out of them. It's just, you know, a select few of them stay with me. I always think if I can remember the melody when I'm away from my, like, wherever I'm writing it, then it's a good song. But if I walk away from it and I can't remember it five minutes later, then it's, like, not really worth it to me, to be honest. It seems in one of your blogs, I remember you were uh, recounting a... I can't believe you actually read my blog. Uh, I, I was reviewing. <laughs> I, I, was, I was trying to catch up on what you've been up to, so I was scrolling through your cool. website. I haven't stuff. updated that in a while. No, it's been a while, but yeah. there was a story that you were you had met a guy and just talking yeah. to him. It wasn't like a, a dating thing. It was just you were talking to him yeah. and getting to know him. Yeah, a lot of moments, too, I like to just take in for myself, even if it's not, I'm not writing a story necessarily about it. Just the experience helps with story writing, you know, just... I don't know how to explain it. It's just the more you experience, the better you get at songwriting and storytelling. But that was really cool. I was at Mount Rushmore, and they were doing some sort of um, ceremony. I think they probably do it, like, often to show off the mountain or whatever. <laughs> and he had he was, like, standing next to us, and he had, like, the veteran sign on his backpack, and they called, like, veterans down to the stage. And I was like, hey, man. Like, I dropped down his shoulder. I was like, hey, man, you got to get down there. See, you're a veteran. So he goes down there. And then afterwards, I talked to him just because everybody has a story, you know. And he, like, sorry. He um, lived in Arizona, and he walked all the way to Michigan. He was telling me he was scared to um, get water when he was in. He said he was in, like, Potas no, Mackinac Island. But he was scared to get water because he heard about Flint. And I was like... <laughs> That's not, it's only in Flint, but <laughs> yeah, um, so that was really cool. I just dropped him off at the bottom of a mountain, so <laughs> that was pretty much it, but it led to that blog post, so that was cool. But that led to the question in my head, like when you're experiencing new humans that you don't really know, mm -hmm. you're just talking to them, do you ever take their stories and turn them into songs? I'm not a songwriter. I, yeah. would, I would tend to write about what's happening to me, yeah. but I know that definitely other people inspire or have been inspired by other people they've met. I don't know if that's the kind of songwriter right, you are. Where, right. where, where do your songs come from, yourself, or from meeting other people, or both? Yeah, um, well, I find myself having a lot of muses, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. If I get into a relationship or if I love somebody a lot, I'll write a lot about them, but I'm writing about them through my eyes. I usually write about things through my eyes, mm -hmm. but I am... A very personable, personable person. I love, I work at, you know, you saw me at the Detroit Shipping Company. I love meeting people. That's a place where I can just talk to most random people. You never know who you'll see. Like yeah. I saw you. Yeah. And so, um, you know, traveling too, I think just meeting people and listening to their stories is super important just for human growth even. And just keeping them little words, like it just creates who you are and it helps with your songwriting in general. Very cool. Yeah. What is the next song that you're going to play about? Oh, let's see. What is the next song I'm going to play? Um, <laughs> I can't tell you because I don't know. How many songs do I have left to play? Two. Two? Okay. So this song... Um, a hundred. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know. I'm what trying about? to think. I'm trying to think because I feel like I'm in a storytelling mood right now. Sing me a story song. Right. Um, so... Yeah, let's do this one. This is Fire in the Crying Chair. I wrote this when I was at The Voice. I wrote this on the bathroom floor. There was um, like fires going on, uh, like wildfires at the time. And you could see the smog and like the ash and even some like red, it seemed. Maybe it was just because it was like sunset time, but it seemed like there was red coming up, uh, for, like flames or something. And I was, before I went to the bathroom to write this song, I was sitting in a chair um, right by the window. So I call this song Fire in the Crying Chair. So yeah.
when I get home Even though I miss you so I'm doing this just right the crying chair mm-hmm. from Sid Burnham on Acoustic Alternatives from her first full-length album. You have an yeah. EP and a full-length album out so far, and that was two years ago, three years ago you put that out? Yeah, that was t- 2019. 2019. Uh, mm-hmm. It's all blurred. But all the songs from that album I wrote like two years prior to that. That's if that works, helps right. with anything. Well, yeah. <laughs> that puts a timeline on, on your thing. What comes right. easier to you, melodies or lyrics when you're writing? Oh, usually melodies. I love writing melodies so much. I think a melody is what makes a song. Like if you don't have that catchy hook, that catchy thing that's going to stick in your head, it's not going to like live with people after they finish the song, you know, after yeah. it's, they're done listening. So um, a lot of times I'll get melodies in my head and I'll just go through like different journal entries or just random stuff that I've written down and throw lyrics together or sometimes lyrics just roll off my tongue. I don't know. Yeah. That has a good hook. That one does. Thanks. That one sticks with you. Thanks. Good job. It. Thank Bravo. You. Keep that one in the set. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I know earlier this year you played a, a Bliss Fest open mic for, mm-hmm. for That a was web. cool. Is there other, uh, other? I know you were, you were just realizing that you could start playing out again, but there, right? were there other things that you were planning for the year before you realized that? Were there other online gigs that you booked? No, honestly, I was not a big fan of the whole Zoom thing. I know that sounds weird because all the musicians were on there doing it, but I just didn't like it. I hardly partake took in it because I was just like, I, maybe I could have gotten some like tips from it, but it just didn't feel right. It didn't feel real. 
I was not having it. So I don't have a lot planned online wise, but I did just confirm two gigs for the summer. So that'll be Good. fun. I'm playing Ethan Algy um, on June 26. Excuse me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty positive that's right. Sometime in June. <laughs> right? Um, that's up in um, Elk Rapids. And then I just got um, a Friday night set at Pond Jam, which is up in that same type, same kind of a- area. So that'll nice. be really fun. So it's starting to happen. Things are coming back together for you. Right, that's good. right. For sure. So a few newer songs you played uh, for a girl. You've also released Milky in Summertime. Yeah, and your yeah. plans were to release one a month until things went a little sour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll just take I'll just take the fault with it. Like I'll just well, no, admit no that fault. I gave up. You know, whatever. Well, I, <laughs> I think part of the reason that you didn't have as much interest in doing the Zoom thing, not only because you weren't comfortable with it, is that you weren't relying on it for your income. Right. That too. Yeah. I have been working my butt off yes. at multiple different jobs. You know, and then even during quarantine when I couldn't actually work, I was door dashing all of the time. At one point, you were doing uh, teaching as well, teaching music. Were you still doing that? Yeah. I um was I did one. I I had one student over Zoom um, during quarantine, and it was fine, but it was really touch and go because I just had, I've been really busy with school, work, everything, you know, um, but I haven't done school or lessons for a while. I did that when I lived back at home because I did it out of a studio in Milford called the Michigan Rock School, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Is there anything going on with your band, Red Herring? Is that a dead project or is that a project that might come back to life? <laughs> well, all of the question? boys, <laughs> no, 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 not at all. All of the boys are kind of scattered. Um, the guitar player and the drummer live in Boston. They go to Berkeley. Oh, well, there's that. Right. And then um, the bassist, guitarist, whatever, you know, multi-instrumentalist, um, Max, he lives in um, Florida. He goes to Full Sail and he is the one that actually mixes and like, honestly, he produces and plays instruments for most of my songs too. So he is awesome with that. He's like the second mind suit, any of the songs that I will be releasing. Um, but yeah, we have a, I think it's like July 10th or something. We have a random red herring gig actually. Really? Yeah. It's, um, it's, um, uh, you know, Bliss Fest, the festival, some um, Bliss Fest goers are hosting a little um, festival of their own for to host the backlash of the festival not happening the, like this year again, you know. So I guess we're going to play a set. I don't know much about it, though. Well, you got <laughs> to. H- how do you practice when your band is scattered in the different parts of the country? Honestly, I it. just got to pull my weight. Those guys are a talented as heck and they don't need one day of practice you, you know just need lyrics. all they need is to come together and honestly if i just have it all i need to do is memorize the songs and then i have it because we're we have played together so much and especially when you we kind of grew up to playing together especially they grew up playing together you know and when you grow up with people like that and you play with them for a long time when you come back it's just like riding a bike mm-hmm. you know what i mean and when you go into get into the flow of the set and the different cues, when to stop and all that, it's just you look at each other, you give the head nod, you know, you do one of those and you figure it out. So yeah, I'm excited to see them all again because I haven't seen them in a really long time. You can say that about a lot of people, I bet. <laughs> yeah, definitely for sure about <laughs> if everyone. I hadn't, if I hadn't ran into you at the shipping company, it would have been you know, right. Two I years. probably wouldn't be here right now. I depends. I mean, if you depends, if unless you, I texted you on say, Facebook. Hey, I'm doing music. I'm doing music. <laughs> right. Oh, you are right. <laughs> well, let's, let's have you in. I mean, I want to, I want to try and highlight my favorites that are happening in the in the local music scene. Yeah, and that's acoustic, awesome. Acoustic alternatives. And when I saw your face, I'm like, there's a voice that really impressed me the first time I heard it. Uh, I, I know that we're not we're not going to do a cover today, but one of the things that really impressed me was your version of. Led Zeppelin's "What Is and What Should Never Be." Oh, thanks! You did you did that in the studio with your dad last time I saw you. That's definitely a go-to. Every is, time somebody's like cover, let's do that one. That you you did that one really well. Like you own it. Thanks. Um, I imagine though, at this point, when you're doing your sets in the bars, you're probably incorporating more current pop tunes into the set. Oh yeah, I, maybe. A little bit. Who, yeah. Who are you who are you covering in the in the current world, not the classic rock world? Um, there's a artist called Her. Mm-hmm. If you've heard of Her, her? Yes, yeah, I have. she's actually all capital letters, right? right? She's really amazing too. She's a phenomenal guitar player, actually. Um, but I have covered one of her songs. Who else? Um, I did SZA, like I was talking about earlier. I just covered one of her songs. It's another recent one. Hmm. Oh, I did a Tame Impala song. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, 
Yeah. Some more current pop ones. They're all super easy, just four chords. You could literally tell me any song that's on the radio, I could do it right now. You know what I mean? Just look it up. <laughs> Dua Lipa, don't stop now. Right, I could do that. Honestly, you know, when I was at The Voice, her first album, every time I would go out to work out in the workout room, that was all I was blaring. So every time I listen to that, that's all I can think about. <laughs> Interesting. Well, how much of what you plan to do in the next five years is music related? Since you're going to try and finish school and have that as your backup plan, where does music fit into the plan? Honestly, it's hard to say. It's uh, I never know. Since I've been doing this for a long time, I never know what corner I'm going to go down with music. You know, um, uh, when I started out, I was doing a lot of open mics and I got a lot of gigs. And then all of a sudden I was on The Voice and then I was in a band, you know, every every year it's like something different. So I don't know where music is going to go. I'm just going to keep rolling with it and see what happens. In the meantime, I'm going to work on other stuff as well. Just, you know, I don't want to just depend on one thing. And also when I put my whole identity behind music, I tend to lose myself because okay. you know, I feel stuck. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's nice to have the different outlets like graphic design or whatever if I want to I've learned how to sew and that kind of stuff so. it's like a hobby you're really good at and can make a little right, money right right exactly and I'll always keep doing music so cool. even if I'm like 40 and I'm still playing some shows at some Michigan festivals like I'll still be super happy doing that you know well good yeah I'm glad that you're doing it I enjoy Thanks. I enjoy seeing what's next and hearing what's next from you Thanks. and I look forward to hearing your final song what would you like to do all right let's do I'll um Ended off with my favorite song that I have released, at least. Um, This is called Summertime. I actually wrote this in December, middle of winter, released it in October, fall. It has absolutely nothing to do with summer. (laughs) But um, like I was saying earlier, I have a lot of muses, and I wrote this um, about the same person I wrote for a girl about. And um, this is, they just made me feel like summertime, so I wrote this song about them. All right. I gotta keep you close Just so I can know how far away You feel from me And if you push me away I'll try my best to stay But give you space Oh, I can give you space You're on my mind All of the time Come to your house We do nothing now Lay on the couch
Sounds great to strip down like that. Sid Burnham, summertime on Thank Acoustic you. Alternatives. Thanks for doing that, and thanks for being part of the show. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. I really had so much fun. I'm glad you did. Feels where, good to play. Where can people find more out about you? Yeah, um, I guess um, you can follow my Instagram. I know that sounds cheesy or whatever, but that's really where I update the most. Um, it's just at Sid Burnham, S-Y-D-B-U-R-N-H-A-M. Um, I have a Facebook page, too, if you're more into Facebook. Um, but if you follow my Instagram, you'll see more live updates, you know, with stories and everything. Thing I'm more posting on there. Um, I have a YouTube page, that Summertime song. I have um, a music video that came out with that. You can check that out as well. You were having fun, I can tell. Yeah, that was super fun. <laughs> All my friends are in it. And, um, what and else? They can buy your music somewhere, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, you can buy my music. If you want actual CDs, if you go to CD Baby, you can do that. Or DM me on Instagram. I'll totally send you one. Um, iTunes, Spotify, all of that, I'm on there. You can check it out. All right, Sid, great to see you. Yeah, thanks so much. Let's keep in touch. For sure. And thanks for joining us for Acoustic Alternatives.